Hey guys and welcome to the school station. In today's video I'm going to be talking about animal and plant cells. This is from the AQHSC Biology 91 paper from the unit Cells and Organization. This is the first ever video in this series and in this video I'm going to be talking about the basics of cells. We're going to be looking at the two types of cells, animal cells and plant cells, the structure and also we're really going to be talking about what cells actually are. So let's just get right into this video. So first of all, we actually have to think about what are cells. Cells are the basic building blocks of all animals and plants. We are all organisms, and cells are basically the smallest thing that you can find inside our bodies. However, obviously, uh, cells do have subcellular structures, but at the same time, we really have to th think about cells and how they're the basic building blocks of all organisms in this world. So. The way actually cells make up us organisms, even though they're so small, is by actually building them up. We have many different cells inside our body and using all these cells, they actually make tissues. When there is a lot of tissues, it makes organs. When there is a lot of organs, they make organ systems. And last of all, having a lot of organ systems put together makes us we, and we are organisms. So let's just go through this a little bit more uh, slowly. So first of all, if we have lots of different types of cells, for example, let's say uh, a muscle cell, what's going to happen is that if there is a lot of muscle cells put together, it's going to make a muscle tissue. Slowly, um, the muscle tissue can actually make, um, a lot of muscle tissues together can actually make a muscle organ. And uh, an example of an organ that is a muscle is the heart because the heart is a muscle. Therefore, a heart it becomes the organ and we obviously know that organs are very important parts of us. When heart organs are formed, we actually the heart is actually formed, we also know that there are many other organs and when all the organs actually work together, it is called an organ system and there are many different organ systems, for example the digestive system, uh, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, these are all different systems and they actually happen when a lot of organs are working together. And last of all, when lots of organs are working together into an organ system um, and lots of organ systems are happening, it makes us as an organism because we use all these different types of systems to make sure that our body is working perfectly, like the digestive system um, and the nervous system and all the other systems that we have inside our body. So a small thing like a cell can slowly build up to tissues. A lot of tissues put together can make an organ. A lot of organs working together makes an organ system. And a lot of organ systems working together makes us, which we are organisms. So now that I've actually clarified what cells are and how cells actually make us as an organism, we now have to talk about the two different types of cells. There are animal cells and plant cells. So what we have to know is that animals and plant cells are examples of eukaryotic cells. We're going to be looking at this in our next video. But eukaryotic cells are basically a particular group of cells and they actually have an example of eukaryotic cell is animal and plant cells. So, animal cells are actually cells that are in animals, including humans. Even though in real life it may seem very weird if you call someone an animal, in, tr in true scientific, um, re in scientific research, we actually know that humans are actually animals because we are in the category of mammals. So therefore, we are actually uh, animals as well, and we actually have animal cells inside us. So animal cells are cells that are in animals, including humans. So any animal that you'll find, for example, a snake, an elephant, a giraffe, any type of animal you may find, they all have cells inside them and these are called animal cells. Obviously they have different types of animal cells which we're going to be looking at the specialized cells video but do not worry about that too much. The next one that we have is plant cells and obviously you may have guessed it, they're the cells that are in plants and they make their own food by photosynthesis. We should know that plants actually don't get food by themselves, for example, we as animals we have to search for our own food, however since plant cells usually stay, stay stationary and they have to stay in the ground, they actually have to make their own food by photosynthesis and we're going to be looking at this later on but they're just the cells that are in plants and again there are many different types of plant cells but we're going to be looking at the typical structure today in this video and we're also going to be having another video about specialized cells in plants. So now that we've clarified what are animal cells and what are plant cells, we can now go to the structure of an animal cell. This is how a typical animal cell looks like. 
It has five features and you must learn all of these features by heart and you must know how to draw them because these will be coming up in the exam over and over again. So as you guys can see, the animal cell actually includes a mitochondria, a nucleus, a vacuole, a cytoplasm and a cell membrane. And each of these uh, features actually have a job as well, which you'll definitely have to understand. First of all, the cell membrane. I like to remember this as kind of like the gate. Okay, so the cell membrane actually controls the passages of substances such as glucose and mineral ions into the cell. It also controls the movement of, sub of substances such as urea or hormones out of the cell. So basically controls the passages of substances in and out of the cell. Next is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a liquid gel in which the organelles are suspended and where most of the chemical reactions needed for life take place. So this is also a very important um, part or feature of the animal cell. The next thing we have is a vacuole. So this is actually not usually in an animal cell, so we're not really going to learn about this because vacuoles are actually not usually in animal cells. The next one is a nucleus. Uh, the nucleus is basically where it controls all the activities of the cell and is surrounded by the nuclear membrane. It contains the genes and the chromosomes that carry the instructions for making the proteins needed to build new cells or new organisms. Um, so this is basically the, like the brain of the cell, but definitely do not ever write in the exam that the nucleus is the brain of the cell. You just have to remember that it um, contains all the DNA and the genetic material inside the nucleus. And at the same time, it also uh, controls all the activities of the cell. And then we also have the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is basically the structures in the cytoplasm where aerobic respiration takes place, releasing energy for the cell, and they're also very small. And something that many people actually get confused in is that mitochondria does respiration, but we actually have to think say that my, mitochondria does aerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration does not take place in mitochondria, only aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria. And last of all, we also have ribosomes, which is actually this one over here. You may see them as little circles like these ones over there, but you know, this is something that you might see more in the GCCs. But ribosomes are basically where protein synthesis takes place, making all the proteins needed in the cell. So this is basically how the typical animal cell looks like and what it has inside. Next we have the plant cell. So first of all, we have to understand the plant cell is obviously the cells inside plants. And plant cells have the five features of an animal cell plus three more, okay? So what, it, what we're talking about here is that it has five of these cells. Remember, do not include a vacuole, okay? Do not include vacuole. This is not correct. Um, so animal cell has ribosomes, mitochondria, nucleus, cytoplasm, and cell membrane. And the plant cell have these five features of an animal cell plus three more, okay? So as you can see over here, there is cell membrane, there is nucleus, there is um, cytoplasm, and there, there is also ribosomes and mitochondria, which is not included in this particular diagram. But they also have three more features. So before we actually get on to show you guys the three extra features, we actually have to quickly talk about algae. Algae are simple aquatic organisms that also make their own food by photosynthesis. For centuries they were classified as plants, but now they're part of the protista kingdom. All plant and algal cells have a cell wall, but chloroplasts and permanent vacuoles are most plant cells only. So what we're talking about here is that basically algae, algae are basically another type of um, cells. So there is algal cells. And before they used to be uh, thought as plants because they make their own food by photosynthesis. But now they actually fall in the category of protista, which is another kingdom. So there are five main kingdoms. So they actually now are part of the protista kingdom. And all plant and algal cells have a cell wall. So it's over here, cellular cell wall, but chloroplasts and permanent vacuoles are most plant cells only. So in algal cells, you will not find um, the vacuole and the chloroplast, okay? But we're talking about a general plant cell over here, so that's why I included vacuole and chloroplast. So basically what we're going to be talking about here is that a vacuole is basically... Um, a, vacuole, a permanent vacuole is a space in the cytoplasm filled with cell sap. This is important for keeping the cells rigid to support the plant. And then the other thing we have is the chloroplast. The chloroplasts are found in the green parts of a the plant. They're green because they contain the green substance chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs light so the plant can make food by photosynthesis. And um, yeah, so that's basically what you have to know about chloroplasts. And last of all, we also have to know about the cell wall. The cell wall is basically made of cellulose and it strengthens the cell and gives it support. So that's basically everything you have to know about the plant cell.
So I hope you guys have understood so far about the animal and plant cell and what they are, what cells are and how cells make up an organism. And now I actually want to show you guys a small practice question. So this practice question actually tells us to list the main structures you'd expect to find in a human cell. And there's actually five marks, okay? So five marks means that if you actually get this question right, you could be gaining five marks in the exam paper. I want you guys to pause this video and have a go on, on answering this practice question. So I want you guys to pause right now. Alright guys, hope you guys have tried it out and seen if you can answer this question and here is the answer. From what we have learnt in this video, we have learned that animal cells are basically cells or in animals, but according to science we also know that humans are actually animals as well. So even though they're not telling you list the main structures you'd expect to find in a human cell, you should know that a human cell is equals to an animal cell. And what it said tells us that it's a five mark question, it means that they actually want us to point out five main structures. So basically all I did was I wrote down all the structures of what we've seen in our um, animal cell diagram. Okay, so it, as I said earlier, there is the nucleus, the cytoplasm, the cell membrane, the mitochondria, and the ribosomes, okay? So those are the five main structures you'd expect to find in a human cell, and just wrote these down, and you would get an instant five marks in this question, which means a lot of marks in an exam paper. So definitely understand that an animal cell is also a human cell, and a human cell is equal to an animal cell, because a human is an animal as well. So I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed today's lesson. I hope this helps you. Just as an overview of what we've learned today, we have learned that what cells are. So cells are the basic building blocks of um, animals and plants. We also learned the structure of an animal cell. We obviously know there are five main features in an animal cell. And last of all, we've also learned the structure of a plant cell. And we know that there, in a plant cell, there is a five features of an animal cell plus three more. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this lesson. Give it a thumbs up if, and subscribe down below to school for the school station to see more free science and maths lessons. Bye guys!